everyone, Jennifer Maker here. It is a beautiful day to make something fun together. So I have made a lot of projects over the years. Some of the most popular projects include how to apply layered vinyl to t-shirts, how to make paper flowers, and of course, glitter tumblers. But there's one project that I get asked about all the time. Can you guess what it is? It is stickers. Everyone just loves learning about how to make stickers with their Cricut cutting machine. Lots of people who have perfected it have even started small businesses selling their own stickers. And I have made several step-by-step -step videos showing you how to make stickers, and I have a ton of free sticker designs on my blog. But something else I get asked about quite a bit is, how do I make stickers that are water resistant or waterproof? So today I'm gonna to show you not only how to make stickers, but with a bunch of beautiful new designs for you as well. And we're gonna make stickers that are waterproof or as close to waterproof as possible. I have done all the testing with different sticker papers in different ways to protect the stickers. And I'm going to share my findings with you along with the one way that I think works best. So come along with me to my craft table so I can show you everything that I have found so far. So let's take a look at everything that I used to make these waterproof stickers and test them. I printed my stickers on two different types of paper, Avery sticker paper and printable vinyl sticker paper. I used my color inkjet printer to print these, but you can also use a laser printer. Both will work great. I'm sure whatever you have will do the job. I cut the stickers out with my Cricut cutting machine. Both the Cricut Maker and the Explorer series can do print and cut stickers like this. The Cricut Joy cannot. And then I sealed the stickers in three different ways. One way to seal them is to apply clear or transparent vinyl just like this. Did you even know they make this stuff? Most people don't. I also sealed some stickers with polyurethane spray, just like this one right here. And uh, lastly, I used DuraClear varnish to seal the stickers. So I tried all three ways and I will share my test results at the end of this tutorial. But I will tell you this, I was actually really surprised by the findings. I am sharing all of these sticker designs that you see here freely so you can make whatever you need. Now let me show you where to find the free designs and then I will show you how to set up your stickers in Cricut Design Space, print and cut them on paper or printable vinyl, and then seal them so they stay looking beautiful for a long time to come. Step one, get my free sticker designs. Go to my blog at jennifermaker.com slash 367 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. And then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the designs by searching the page for design number 367 and then click it to download a zip file with PNG files for cutting on a Cricut or another cutting machine. There are four folders containing more than 30 sticker designs. I've included four collections, Christmas, Every Day, Thank You, and Wedding. Click on each folder to open it up and see what's inside. If you're unsure how to unzip and upload PNG or SVG files, please watch my SVGs Made Simple training series at jennifermaker.com SVGS. Step two, upload and cut your stickers. Now, one big lesson I have learned when cutting stickers is that calibration is key. In case you aren't familiar with the term calibration, it simply means to adjust to something, and in this case, our Cricut cutting machine, so that it can be used in an accurate and exact way. So before we design and cut our stickers, I recommend that you perform a calibration of your Cricut machine. To do this in Cricut Design Space, click on the three horizontal lines in the top left of the screen, also known as the hamburger menu, because it looks like a hamburger, and scroll down to calibration. Then choose print then cut. Choose your printer and follow the instructions to calibrate your printer. It's also important to clean the print heads on your inkjet printer. This will give you the best print then cut results for your project. Consult your owner's manual for your printer to find out how to clean the print heads. 
Once that's done, it's time to make some stickers. In Cricut Design Space, I'm going to begin by uploading some of my designs to the canvas. On the left side of your screen, click on the Upload icon. Click Upload Image. Then click Browse and locate the files for this project. First, I'm going to select and upload the Evergreen Wreath file from the Christmas folder. When you see the image, choose Complex and then click Continue. And then click Apply and Continue and select Print Then Cut Image and click Upload. Repeating the upload steps above, I'm going to select and upload a few more designs. The heart and scallop design from the everyday folder, and I will also upload the colored mandala design from the same folder. And I will upload the Mr. and Mrs. Sticker from the wedding folder, and the thank you watercolor rectangle design from the thank you folder as well. You can add as many images as you'd like to your canvas. Keep in mind that the more images you cut, the longer it can take for design space to process the project. With my images uploaded, I'm now going to select the five images by selecting them under Recent Uploads and then click Add to Canvas. First, I will show you how to personalize these stickers, which you can do with any of these designs. Then I will show you three different methods that I tested for making my stickers water resistant. I will show you what worked, what failed, and which method ended up being my favorite. Click on each of the images to move them around so they are not overlapping. Let's get started by personalizing our first sticker. We'll start with the Thank You Watercolor Rectangle Sticker. You can drag it to the side if you'd like. Click on the text icon on the left side of your canvas. A box will appear that says Add Text Here. And I'm going to type for Celebrating With Us. To change the font, click on the drop-down menu below Font on the left side of the top menu bar. A window will come up with a list of fonts. You will see both your computer system fonts and those in Design Space. If you are not a Cricut Access subscriber and you don't want to worry about paying for a Cricut font, you can click on System at the top of the window to only use the fonts installed on your computer. I'm going to select Americana Standard in the font search box to go directly to it. This is a Cricut font. In my supply list, I have provided a free alternative font for you to download and install on your computer if you need to. If you want to upload your favorite font to Cricut Design Space, just go to jennifermaker.com slash fonts for a tutorial that walks you through the whole process. As you can see, the text or font size is much too large for my little sticker. To easily reduce the font size, drag the double arrow icon in the lower right corner to reduce the size to one that will fit your sticker. You can also change the font size by entering a specific size under font size in the menu bar at the top. I used 8.5 for my font size. I would like my text to be the same color as thank you, so I'm gonna change the color to black. Click on the text and select the dark gray box next to basic cut under operation in the menu bar at the top. Now select black, which is in the bottom row. To close the color selection window, click anywhere on the canvas. Move your text so that it appears below thank you on the sticker. I want to make sure my text is centered in the sticker, so I'm going to click and drag my mouse over the sticker image and the text. To confirm that you have both objects selected, you will see the text layer and the image layer highlighted in the layers panel on the right side of your canvas. And in the menu bar at the top of the canvas, click the drop down under Align, and then select Center Horizontally. If you're satisfied with how your sticker looks, with the two objects selected, you'll want to click Flatten at the bottom of the Layers panel on the right side of the canvas. Flatten turns any image into a printable image by merging all of the selected layers into a single layer. If we don't flatten the text with the image, our machine will want to cut out the outline of each letter in the text. All right, so let's personalize the mandala color sticker next. Select the text tool on the left side of the canvas, and I'm going to personalize this with my name, but you could add anything you want. You will notice that the last font we used has been selected for us. I think I'd like something in a casual script, however. Salem would be a great font. 
select the drop down under font in the menu bar at the top. And instead of scrolling through a long list of font names, I'm going to just enter the font name Salem in the search bar at the top of the font window. I want my text to be a teal color like that in the mandala. So select the text and then click the dark gray box in the menu bar to the left of basic cut under operation. I don't see a teal color I like from the default choices, but I can select my own color by clicking the advanced. To select different colors, you can drag the slider bar through the color spectrums until you find the one you like. Or if you want to get even more specific, you could enter a hex color in the field. A hex color is a six digit combination of numbers and letters defined by its mix of red, green, and blue. I designed this sticker and I really like the teal color and I'd like to change the text to that specific teal to match. The teal color in the mandala and the design with the hearts is pound or the number symbol followed by 019E9A. So I will type that into the field and there's my color. So cool, huh? Now click anywhere on the canvas to close the color window. Place your text in the middle of the color mandala. I used the steps that I showed you for the thank you sticker to resize and center the text. When you're satisfied with the placement, select the sticker design and the text, both of those, and then click flatten. All right, now let's add some personalization to the evergreen wreath sticker. Select the text tool and type season's greetings on two lines. I'm going to change my font to Annie Lou by selecting the drop down under the font and then selecting Annie Lou. I think there's too much line space between seasons and greetings here. There are two ways to reduce the text line space. You can use the down arrow under line space in the menu bar to decrease it. You can also select the text and then split the text into two lines. To do this, select the text and then click the drop down for advanced located on the right side of the menu bar at the top of the canvas and then click ungroup to lines. Now with the lines ungrouped, I'm able to select and position each line of text so they're closer to each other. All right, now select both lines and resize season greetings so it fits in the center of the wreath like mine. You could also regroup them before you resize if you want. All right, next, select the text tool and add the makers. Of course, you'll want to use your name instead of mine. I'm going to change the font to Americana Standard for the makers. Position and resize the makers below Seasons Greetings using the methods I showed you for the other stickers. I think my text would look great in a pretty red, and I'm going to select all three text objects I just created and select the red color from the default color palette. When you're happy with the placement and color, select all three text objects and the sticker design. Make sure you have all of those selected and then click flatten. For the last image, I'm going to create a sticker for the envelope of a wedding. So a save the date card that I want to send out. First, click and drag the Mr. and Mrs. hand lettered graphic to the middle center of our last sticker image. This is the scallop sticker with the colorful border and two hearts. If that design disappears behind the sticker, remember you can move things front and back by clicking Arrange at the top. Using the text tool, I'm going to add Emma and John, and again I'm going to use the Americana standard font. Then I click Text again and type the date and change that font as well. I want to keep both lines of text the same size, so I'm going to select both and reduce the font size by dragging the double arrow icon in the lower right until both are small enough to fit on the sticker. Now let's put them in place. Click on Emma and John and position that just above the Mr. and Mrs. graphic. Do the same with the date, but place that just below. To ensure everything is centered, select all of the objects for the sticker by clicking and dragging a bounding box around everything and then select Center Horizontally from the Align drop-down menu. When you're happy with the placement and how things look, make sure all objects for the sticker are selected and then click Flatten. Look at how nice these personalized stickers are. All right, print and cut projects have a maximum print area of 6.75 inches by 9.25 inches with a default material size of 8.5 by 11 inches at the time I'm making this recording. These settings cannot be changed. 
To give us an idea of placement and sticker size, click on the Shapes icon on the left side of the canvas and select the square. By default, the square imports to the canvas at 2 by 2 inches. To resize that square, go to the Size section in the menu bar at the top, click on the lock icon that's between the W and H boxes. In doing this, we are unlocking the aspect ratio for the shape. This allows me to enter custom numbers into the W and H boxes. The lock icon remained closed. Once I add the 6.75 for the width, the height would automatically change to 6.75 as well. So type 6.75 in the width box and 9.25 in the height box. Select the shape and then click on the drop down under a range in the menu bar at the top of the canvas and select send to back. The reason I selected send to back versus move backward is so that the object would move behind all of the other objects on the canvas. Move backward only moves the item under one layer. You will note that it is now the bottom layer in the Layers panel on the right side of the canvas. This square will serve as a template for the Print Then Cut area. I want to print four copies of each sticker image onto one sheet of sticker paper. The current size is too large for that many stickers. After playing with the sizes of the sticker images, I found that if I resize the width of the three round stickers to two inches and the thank you sticker width to one and a half inches, I can get four copies of each sticker on one sheet of sticker paper. Now you may have to tinker with the measurements a few times before getting them to the size needed for the quantity of stickers that you want to print on a sheet. Click and drag your mouse to select all four stickers. At the top of the Layers panel, click the Duplicate icon three times. We now have four copies of each sticker. You can add them to the template to make sure they all fit. Once everything looks right, you can hide or delete the Print Area template. To hide it, click the eye icon for the template in the Layers panel at the right of the canvas. And to delete it, simply select it and then click Delete on your keyboard. We're now ready to print and cut our stickers. If you want to keep the stickers in the exact layout as they are on the screen, you can select them all and then click Attach, but this is not necessary. Click Make It in the upper right corner of the canvas. Depending on the number of stickers that you're making, it can take a bit longer to process before you see the preview screen. Check your sticker placement on the preview screen. If everything looks good, click Continue. You're now on the Make screen. First thing we need to do is click Send to Printer. The Printer Setup window appears and then make sure Add Bleed is turned on so the slider is green. The bleed is a small border around each image that allows for more precise cutting. The bleed is trimmed off during the cutting process, resulting in a precisely cut image. You can continue by clicking Print, however, I like to change the slider to green to use System Dialog before I click Print. Using System Dialog will bring up a print screen for my printer, which allows me to specify the tray that my sticker paper will print from, as well as the quality of the print job. I always recommend printing at the best quality for the best stickers. You'll need to minimize or move your Design Space window to see the Print Dialog box. It usually pops up behind Design Space. There is a chance the System Dialog box will not work on all printers. Each printer is different, so consult your printer's user guide for additional support. After your sticker paper has printed, set it aside until the ink is completely dry to avoid any smears during the cutting process. This is what my printed sticker looks like. You will notice a black box around my stickers. This is called a registration box and it's used by your Cricut to tell it exactly where to cut your project. Now that we've printed our stickers, click Browse All Materials to select the base material. In the search bar, type Washi. That's the setting that I found works best for Kiss Cut stickers when using the sticker papers in my supply list. Kiss Cut stickers cut around each sticker, but it does not cut through the sticker backing. Place your sticker sheet on a blue light grip machine mat. Make sure to line it up to the top left corner of the mat. Use your hands or a brayer to ensure the sticker sheet is stuck really well to the mat. Now place your fine point blade into clamp B on your machine. Load your mat and press the button to load your mat and then press the flashing button when it begins to start cutting. 
When the cut is finished, press the button to unload your mat. And to remove your sheet of stickers, flip your mat over and gently pull the mat away from the sticker sheet. Step three, waterproof testing. I really enjoy making stickers and I love being able to create my own designs and personalize them. I think you do too. I don't, however, like how well they hold up when they get exposed to water. If you know me, I love to do testing, especially when it comes to crafting. So I was determined to test and find a waterproofing method that I could recommend it to you. For this test, I looked at three different waterproofing methods, polyurethane, transparent vinyl, and Duraclear varnish. And the results of these methods on paper sticker versus vinyl sticker paper. My first test is using Avery sticker paper. To start, I printed four sheets of the stickers that we just personalized on my inkjet printer using the Avery sticker paper from my supply list. For sheet one, after printing it, I cut this sheet of stickers just like I showed you earlier. I wanted a kiss cut sticker, so I left my material setting at washi. After I cut the stickers, I removed the sticker sheet from the mat by flipping the mat over and gently pulling the mat away from my sticker paper. Next, I went to a well-ventilated area to spray the stickers. I made sure to follow all the proper safety guidelines, put on gloves, a mask, and protective eyewear. I recommend you do the same thing. If you can spray the stickers outdoors, that's also a great option. And remember, before using any type of household spray or chemical, I recommend reading and following the safety data sheet that is published for it. Now, I applied two coats of polyurethane to the stickers, waiting about one hour between coats. I then waited two hours after the second coat for the polyurethane to completely dry before I did my water test. For sheet two, I cut these stickers using washi for the material setting to get that kiss cut sticker sheet. This time, after the stickers were cut, I removed the sticker paper from around the stickers so I just had the stickers and the backing. The next day, I used a paintbrush and applied one thin coat of Duraclear varnish to the top of the stickers. Once again, I took all of the appropriate safety measures and I let the Duraclear dry on the stickers for two hours. It was important for me to wait one day for the printer ink to dry. During my first test, I applied the Duraclear varnish directly after printing and the ink smeared everywhere. It's also important to remove the sticker paper from around the stickers. If you leave it on, once you put the Duraclear on it, you won't be able to remove the stickers. Okay, so don't forget that. Now for the third sheet, before I sent this sheet of stickers to be cut, I put a piece of transparent vinyl on top of it um, so that it fit inside the registration box and then I cut it. It's important that you don't cover that registration box because if you cover it, you may have issues with your cutting machine's ability to read that registration box. To apply the transparent vinyl, I just pulled back on the top part of the backing paper, then aligned the vinyl to the top of the stickers below the registration box line. I found it helpful to use a scraper tool over the vinyl as I pulled off the paper backing. In order to obtain a kiss cut sticker with the additional layer of transparent vinyl on top of the stickers, I adjusted my material setting for the principal white sticker paper setting to cut with a pressure of 300. To do this, click Browse on Materials and then select Material Settings in the lower left of the screen. Scroll down to find printable sticker paper, white, and click Edit. Then drag that slider pressure to 300, then save it. And then scroll down to the bottom of the list and click Done in the lower right corner. Then click on Browse on Materials, type Sticker in the search field, select Printable Sticker Paper White, and click Done. All machines can cut slightly differently, so you may need to experiment with the material and pressure settings for yours. When changing settings, make sure to reset your custom setting when you're done. You can also create a new material instead of changing the settings for existing materials. I explain exactly how to do that step by step on my blog and another tutorial about making reusable stencils. Go to jennifermaker.com and search for design number 349 to see how it's done. For sheet four, our last sticker sheet, I changed my base material setting back to washi so I could get a kiss cut sticker.
After cutting, I left this sheet of labels as is, so I would have a control for our waterproofing testing. Now let me walk you through my testing process. When I tested the durability of the stickers in water with only the sticker backing, I really couldn't see how well they held up or lifted. The paper backing on the stickers began to fall apart. After many tests, I found that the best method was to put each sticker on a square of rem removable or permanent vinyl. This way, when the stickers were submerged in water, nothing happened to the vinyl, and I could clearly see how well each waterproofing method that I was using on the stickers performed in the water. To create my squares of vinyl, I just made four two and a half by two and a half inch squares in Design Space, and then I clicked Make It, and I clicked Continue on the preview screen. Base material was set to removable vinyl, and then after I cut the vinyl squares, I removed the excess vinyl from the backing, and I cut the material so I had four individual squares. On the backing of the first vinyl square, I wrote poly paper, and then I placed a sticker from that sheet of stickers that I sprayed with polyurethane onto the vinyl square. For the next square, I wrote paper Duraclear. I then took the same sticker design from the, stick, the sheet of stickers, coated with Duraclear as the design I used from the polyurethane sticker sheet and stuck it to the second square. It was important for me to use the same sticker design for all waterproofing methods so that I could see the differences in the results. And I wrote paper vinyl on the back of the third vinyl square and I took the same sticker design from the sheet as I selected from the other sheets and applied that sticker to the vinyl square. And then on the back of the last vinyl square, I wrote paper none, and I put the same sticker design from the sheet of stickers with no waterproofing treatment, and I placed it on the vinyl square. And then I also tested vinyl sticker paper. So for this test, I repeated the same exact steps I used to cut and waterproof the Avery sticker paper, but instead of using Avery sticker paper, I replaced it with vinyl sticker sheets. So I cut four additional squares from vinyl that I created in Design Space, and I used those writing the names that applied to them. So Vinyl Poly, Vinyl Duraclear, Vinyl Vinyl, and then Vinyl None, so that we knew exactly what was what. So I now have eight vinyl squares with a sticker on them, each noted with the type of paper and waterproofing method that I used. So now it's time to dunk them into water and see how well they hold up. I placed all eight squares of vinyl into water so they were completely submerged. I set my timer for 30 minutes and I took a break while I waited. When the timer went off, I removed all eight vinyl squares from the water. I laid each one onto a sheet of paper towel and gently patted each one dry. I then ran my finger across the middle of each of the eight stickers, you know, looking for smearing or paper disintegrating or anything like that. Step four, let's find out the results. So here's what I found. First, let's look at the Avery sticker paper. Here's the one with no treatment. This sticker did the worst in the test, which is what I expected. Paper does not hold up well in water. When I rubbed my finger across the surface of the sticker, the paper began to lift apart and the maker's ink completely smeared. I had high hopes for the sticker with transparent vinyl. In fact, I thought this is the sticker that would outperform all the other methods. However, the sticker with the transparent vinyl overlay had water seeping all around the edges of the sticker. In addition, the edges of the sticker were lifting off the vinyl square that I stuck the sticker to. The sticker painted with a thin coat of Duraclear varnish held surprisingly well. I did observe a very small amount of water seeping into the sticker edges, but it wasn't anything huge. And the Avery sticker paper sprayed with polyurethane held up really well. I honestly thought that this would perform the worst next to the sticker paper with no waterproofing treatment. I did not see any water bleeding into the sticker paper. The only thing I observed were some faint marks in the sticker paper from the polyurethane spray itself. I was definitely surprised with how the stickers held up. For the test using the Avery sticker paper, the winner for me was the sticker coated in polyurethane, and the Duraclear varnish one came in second. All right, now the results of the vinyl sticker paper test. 
I removed the vinyl stickers from the water, same as before, same process. They were in there for 30 minutes and I patted them dry. I expected to see similar results to those uh, that I did with the Avery sticker paper. And I was shocked to see that every sticker looked exactly the same as before I submerged them in water. The vinyl stickers were perfect. There was no water damage and none of the stickers came apart or smeared when I rubbed my finger across them. When it comes to vinyl stickers, you don't even need to waterproof them at all. The results were the same with and without waterproofing treatment. Vinyl stickers are now my favorite because they're truly water resistant. Now, of course, there is a difference between water resistant and waterproofing. I would be amiss if I didn't address that. I would not put these stickers on anything that actually stays submerged in water a bunch, but for say, putting stickers on envelopes that get wet or things that go outside and could get rained on, the printable vinyl is a champ. Now, if you have any questions about making waterproof stickers that didn't get answered here or anything else craft related that you think I can help you with, let me know, leave your question below this tutorial, or ask over in the Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. I love to help and I want to see you make all the amazing stickers that you want. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. <laughs>